For as long as I can remember, I've been a huge fan of The Simpsons. In fact, I would say that it's pretty alright to say I was born into it thanks to my dad. But then in 2003, for Christmas, I got a game that's often considered to be the best Simpsons game of all time. The Simpsons Hit and Run. After The Simpsons Road Rage provoked Sega into suing the developers on the grounds of it being a blatant ripoff of Crazy Taxi, Radical Entertainment went back to the drawing board with the driving engine that they had come up with for the game with the intent of expanding upon it. So they essentially made a lighter and softer GTA clone. In spite of the strong parallels between it and Grand Theft Auto, however, The Simpsons Hit and Run was released in 2003 for the PS2, GameCube, Xbox, and PC to very positive reviews on account of its humor, visuals, and its parodic take on the Grand Theft Auto formula. I haven't played through this game since it came out nearly 12 years ago, and since then I've watched pretty much every episode that came out prior to this game. So, I think on this new playthrough, I'm gonna have a lot more fun and have a lot more laughs, but I want to do something special. Since I'm going to be playing in Springfield, it only makes sense to do the review in Springfield at Universal Orlando Resort. It's the dawn of summer and I'm wearing black. I hope you guys appreciate this. This is The Simpsons Hit and Run. I'm Brent Cockman, and this is Eye on Springfield. Tonight on Eye on Springfield, is the Quickie Mart really selling tainted meat? Who knows? But first, some jerk with a camera has begun filming his next video on location in Springfield. Oh, so just because my name is Jerk and I am a jerk, you just assume that I am one? No, 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 not that jerk. This jerk, Florida-based online video game critic Andrew Bluett, creator of The Backlog. Who the hell are you? This young man is one of many stars who have graced our presence here in Springfield. Some would say we've had one too many. Ha ha ha. What the- how'd you get on my show? So, Mr. Bluett, can you tell me what inspired you to create the backlog and how long you've been doing it for? Screw, screw this, I gotta get back to my review. Oh well, next time on Eye on Springfield, have aliens taken over the town, or is Mr. Burns out on one of his nightly strolls again? Find out at 11. The game's story begins when a bunch of robotic wasps with cameras mounted to them invade Springfield while mysterious black vans start driving around suspiciously. Once the cameras and vans are discovered, Mayor Quimby addresses them live on TV to an angry mob. These miniature cameras are an outrage. Spying on our women's dressing rooms, bathrooms, and locker rooms is unforgivable. I think I speak for all Springfielders when I say, where is the sexy footage? Truly, he's what the people wanted. When are people going to learn? Democracy doesn't work! Homer promptly follows one of the vans back to Mr. Burns' mansion and figures that his billionaire boss is behind the camera spying on everyone in town. But, because this is Homer Simpson we're talking about, his conclusion is... less than correct. Black vans? Hmm. Aren't they connected with some sort of pizziola concern? What? They were only pizza vans? I'm a class 5 idiot! Smithers, release the hounds! Meanwhile, Bart is playing hooky from school so he can pick up Bone Storm 2, but because Marge destroyed a bunch of shipping trucks in the last level, he's SOL. Rest. When will they learn? Video games don't kill people, they just kill their minds! That, that, that's simply not true. I've been playing video games since I was four. And now my head am thinking good with things and stuff all times ever. After some more petty thug shenanigans, Bart ends up helping Professor Frank stabilize Truckosaurus, but it tries to kill him apparently because that wasp camera is controlling it or some such nonsense. Bart's barely able to escape a fiery death, but is abducted by aliens as soon as he's out of the stadium. Why would anyone want to kidnap Bart? What kind of pertinent information could he have? He's been in the fourth grade for the past 27 years, except for that one episode where he and Lisa were in the third grade together, but the point still stands that that kid is dumb. A couple days later, Lisa begins searching for Bart and finds him with his mind erased and pants soiled, leaving him a blubbering, soiled wreck. Marge then begins finding a way to break Bart out of whatever trance he may be in while also investigating a crop circle. She shows the design to Bart, who snaps out of his lack of state of mind and tells her that it's the logo of the new Buzz Cola that Krusty's been peddling. Not only that, but Bart was given a bunch of it on the alien spaceship, and the aliens are using it as a mind control formula to drive the citizens of Springfield insane. A beverage that completely alters your state of mind and makes you more susceptible acceptable to the suggestions of others? Shh, don't make me laugh. After Marge does whatever she can to get the cola off the streets, Apu tries to redeem himself for selling the cola by finding its source. 
Wait, Apu? Why Apu? I mean, yeah, he's a fan favorite character, but it just seems so weird to be playing as the Simpsons for the first four levels. And then, oh look, Mr. Nahasapima Pitalon! Also, why is his red sports car a puke brown in this game? Anyway, I'm getting way too deep into the plot. I'm really close to spoilers. I have not covered the game part of this game, so how does it play? Well, as I've said before, The Simpsons Hit and Run is basically a GTA clone. You can run around, kick stuff, and get into basically any car you can find. Every character plays the same way and has their own free vehicle that comes with them at the start of a new level. There are seven levels total, each with seven story missions, one side mission, three races, a few alternate costumes, new cars to unlock, seven collectible cards, and a host of gags to interact with for an extra laugh or reference to the show. There are also plenty of wasp cameras scattered throughout each level, which explode into a flurry of coins when you destroy them. Coins are also acquired from destroying public property, found lying around, and breaking crates. They're used to buy cars and costumes as well as participate in wager races, which I didn't really do. The three other races I mentioned earlier are part of a circuit that Patty and Selma are running with Milhouse, Nelson, and Ralph officiating. If you win all three of them, you win a new car. New cars can also be purchased from old Gil and a random character from the show, and the reward for side missions is also a new car. At least once per level, you'll need to buy a specific car, outfit, or both to complete a mission. Outfits can be purchased at the clothing hangers placed in each level, and each outfit is ripped straight from the show proper. How well does it come all together? Fairly well. The on-foot controls are fine, nothing exemplary, but the camera is really sensitive, and at times it's a bit problematic. Every so often you may be faced with some minor platforming to get a collectible, but the camera really screws with you. The vehicle controls are a bit slippery, but honestly I don't really mind it all that much, it just adds to the humor value to me. It is frustrating though whenever you're in a mission with a strict time limit and all of the destruction you cause makes the hit and run meter max out, which means that Chief Wiggum and the rest of the police will aggressively hunt you down. The penalty? 50 coins. The camera controls when in a vehicle are gimped, the right analog stick doesn't do anything, instead you have to use the shoulder buttons to turn the camera. Races later in the game feel rigged. The AI is a cheating bastard, and there are sometimes tracks that have no obstacles you can push them into. And if you manage to succeed in doing that anyway, they still catch up to you at a speed that their car could never reach under your control. The cards? Collect all seven in a given level, and you unlock a level in the bonus multiplayer game, which... don't bother. Apparently you unlock an itchy and scratchy cartoon when you get all 49, but some of these cards just seem unobtainable. How the hell do I get this one? Am I expected to fucking fly? Well, if Red Bull gives you wings, I wonder what Duff gives you. Nothing. What a waste of coins. Don't get me wrong though, the gameplay is amusing, and the open world setting holds a fair bit of stuff to do and collect, but there isn't much of an incentive to collect some of this stuff other than being a completionist. Where a hit and run does shine though is in its presentation and story, the latter of which I'll give my thoughts on in the spoilery bit. This game is aesthetically pleasing, has a catchy soundtrack, and is absolutely hilarious, from the exchanges between characters, to the gags, to the pedestrians, to the animation, to the random quips each character has, and it's all thanks to the show's actual writers and voice cast. Sorry, bot. I can't serve booze to a miner. It ain't right. I'm here to buy fireworks. Oh, hell yeah. Oh no, I borrowed all of Flanders' stuff. Quick, think of an excuse to get out of here. Uh, excuse me, I think I have to go shuck some corn. Plus, the characters seem at least partially aware that they are indeed in a video game, which just amps up the funny that much more. Where to next, video game? Please don't sue us again. Hello? Sir, it's The Simpsons again! Oh my gosh, what now? They have a new game, sir, with a strong focus on driving. The blue-haired one. Marge? Yeah, Midge. In the game, she asks us not to sue them again. Hmm, do they have the arrow thing from that crazy taxi ripoff? No, sir. Oh, wow. But, sir! Let it go. Alright, spoiler time, kids. Skip to this time frame if you don't want to know the end of the story. So Apu and Bart trace the cola back to the museum where the aliens Kang and Kodos are musing on how the intergalactic TV show Foolish Earthlings isn't the ratings hit that it once was, and have decided to make humanity go crazy to drive the ratings back up. I'm going to introduce the evil cola into the water supply. 
people will go mad. I like it. Then we distribute laser guns at the Squidport tourist area. I like it. The cola maddened humans will go berserk. I like it. Destroying themselves and their town. Delivering big, big space ratings for foolish earthlings. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't mean to be that guy, but, uh, South Park did it. Yeah, in the 100th episode in Season 7 premiere of South Park, the boys learned that Earth was just an intergalactic reality show, and once the rest of the planet found out, the show was slated to be cancelled and the planet destroyed. Now, I know that the difference is in the details, but since an episode in the previous season pokes fun at how The Simpsons has done every idea ever, and this episode aired literally six months before Hit and Run came out, this seems more deliberate than coincidental. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, so Bart tries to stop an event Krusty is hosting in honor of the tainted cola, but by the time he convinces Krusty to call the event off, the soda's already in the water supply, causing the dead to rise from the grave and, presumably, give foolish Earthlings a ratings bump and or nomination for a space Emmy. And the nominees for Best Primetime Reality Program are... Aloha Mars Foolish Earthlings Sil of Varos, and staying abreast with talentless whores. And the space enemy goes to... Foolish Earthlings. Accepting the award is Foolish Earthlings co-creator Kang from Rigel 7. And it seems Aloha Mars has been cancelled. Homer enlists the assistance of several Springfieldians to transport Mr. Burns' nuclear waste to the alien spaceship, which is conveniently parked just behind the school, causing it to crash. Homer becomes the town hero, Foolish Earthlings finale soars to number one in the space ratings, and the now dead Kang and Kodos are forced to sit through the game credits. No! So on the whole, how is The Simpsons hit and run? It's utterly, absolutely, uncompromisingly hilarious. In spite of the parallels with South Park, the story is amusing, the gameplay, while not great, is zany and cartoony enough that you don't really mind the shortcomings. It's a GTA clone that shuns realism in favor of animated antics, and I love it for that. Cartoons don't have to be 100% realistic. <laughs> there are enough references for the hardcore fans and more than enough laughs for everyone, regardless of their opinion of the show proper. It's entertaining in the most fulfilling way, and for that, I highly recommend you pick up this game as soon as you possibly can. Feels good to be back in here. Long day, really hot. Anyway, until next time guys, have a good night and happy gaming. Yo, motherfucker! Oh god damn it, what is it? You are know exactly what. You are reviewed Pokemon Yellow for Pokemon's anniversary without sharing the ad revenue with us. You reviewed Rayman Legends, which was uh, supposed to be a Wii U exclusive. And now you are filming at the Universal Studios, where Nintendo attractions will be built soon. You make me sick. I bet you forgot what other big Nintendo franchise celebrates its 30th anniversary this year. Uh, Kid Icarus? It's at the Legend of Zelda, you dance a meet a ball. Actually, now that I think about it, it's Metroid's 30th anniversary this year too. I really should get around to playing those games. No! No one cares about a Metroid! Well, maybe not in Japan, but it's pretty well liked here in the West. If we cared about what the West liked or wanted, we would have released Mother 3 ages ago. If you didn't care about what Western audiences thought, then why did you bring Fire Emblem here after Melee? Or why did you put Earthbound on the Wii U Virtual Console in North America? Your completely valid argument is irrelevant. As punishment for neglecting Zelda's anniversary and emulating a Pokémon, you shall be forced to play the newest Zelda game! Skyward Sword? I don't know, I don't really like motion controls, I don't think anyone does. No, after that one! The one you push back to the NX? But that's not until, like, March, isn't it? Oh, what the hell with it! Twilight Princess HD? Didn't you just put out a Wind Waker HD remake on the Wii U a few years ago? Are you running out of ideas? Fine then, don't answer my question, you prick. Well, I don't have much experience with Zelda, but I do know that it is a very well-liked franchise, and I'm more than willing to give it a shot. 
Plus, as you guys can tell, I have a lot to say about Nintendo, not all of it kind. So, next time we're going to be taking a look at The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD for the Wii U, and until then, have a good night guys, and happy gaming.